Okay, we're to the next step of this. I've put two coats on, and as you can tell, this a, it gave a really, really, really good coverage. And so what I've done, I'm going to show you how to sand this. Um, this is the cabinet door with two coats on, and this would be your kitchen cabinets if you were doing that. I left the hardware on, and as you can tell, this um, farmhouse paint is wonderful. You can just sand right over it. So now I'm going to take my sanding pad, and this is probably a 150, 180, and this is a 220. And you can find these kind of pads at Lowe's, Home Depot, whatever home improvement store you like. And so now I'm just going to go over this. And for some of you, if you don't want a distressed look and you just want to poly right over your cabinet, then you're basically done. And some of you might not even feel a need to put a poly on your cabinet because this paint is really very strong and adheres so well. But I know a lot of people have children and they just really want that extra protection for their cabinets. But if you would like a soft patina feel, what this sanding does is it just gives it that softness. But I'm doing this because I'm trying to distress it. And what this is going to create is a bit of chalk dust because it's the kind of paint it is. It's a vintage paint. And so I just take this big brush and I just dust it off. Take a cotton rag if you want and wipe it off with that. And when you pull your hand across it and you don't feel any dust, then you know you're done. If you want to poly it, you can. My next step is going to be glazing because a lot of you like that antique look. And with a lot of chalk paints you have to use a wax and with this you do not which is just wonderful and so this is basically done if you do not want to put a dark wax or an antiquing on it and with this paint you do not need wax you do not need poly but I'm going to go ahead and put a glaze on it so you can see what that looks like okay I'm going to show you all the glazing portion of this now and I'm using tea stain antiquing gel by farmhouse paints um, there are a lot of glazes out there on the market. You can use whichever one you want. I choose to use um, farmhouse paint on this, which I have used farmhouse paints. And I'm just going to dip it in. I'm going to do this kind of lightly, but I'm just going to go right over what I've done. And for some of you who like to use wax, this is going to give you that same kind of a look but it's just real fun to work with. I'm just going to wipe it on real lightly, as you can tell, kind of like in any pattern, because then I'm going to take my cheesecloth, and you can get cheesecloth just about anywhere. I got mine at the um, sewing store, but find anywhere. Okay, so I kind of wiped a little bit of tea glaze all over this. Now, I don't want my look to be that harsh or that heavy, so if that's the look you want, then that, you're probably about done. Just wipe a little bit. So I'm going to take this cheesecloth right here, and I'm just going to wipe it down. And I can wipe off as much as I want, and then just like pull big, long strokes so you don't see that... Um, you don't see like little markings where you pulled and stopped. And I'm just gonna and I'm really just pulling this across very, very lightly. You can find cheesecloth just about anywhere. Home Depot, Lowe's, wherever your hardware store is. And then this just kind of gives it that old worn out look. And it can go once again right over the hardware. And then if you want to come up a little bit closer to see this, this is how my door is going to finish out. And then when I'm done and this dries, this glaze I'm going to let dry for about an hour or so. And then I'm going to put a Rust-Oleum Clear Poly over the top of it. And then this whole project will be done. I'm going to show you the, the top of this so you can see what the back side of doing your cabinets would be like. And then we'll just about be finished with this project. Okay, I'm doing on um, the side of this cabinet because for a lot of you who are doing your kitchen cabinets and this is teaching you how to do your kitchen cabinets, you're going to have a long space usually on the side of the face of your cabinets. And so what I'm doing is I'm just going to put this on here and I'm going to be quiet and just let 
Thomas, my videoer, video me so you can just kind of watch what I'm doing. Alright, so you see I've just kind of put this on here like this and I'll pull big long strokes. And the reason for that is now I'm going to take my cheesecloth and I'm probably going to go to some new cheesecloths because I've used this so much. And I'm just going to pull all the way down. Just giving it that aged look. And on the bottom I'm going to pull this across. And some of you might really want a really heavy distressed look. I'm just going for really more of a light look. Now I'm going to take a brush that is still pretty dry and I'm going to take my strokes and I'm going to pull them. And then from the bottom, just lightly, just like a feather, come from the bottom and grab and pull all the way up. Because that's going to make your distressing look like it all flows together. And wipe it off if that's what you like. But really get right up in that crease and pull all the way down, taking away some of it. And then that's just still a little bit too much for me. Whoops, kind of messed up there. So see, it's as easy as just pulling your cheesecloth because you've already kind of established your glaze. And then I'm going to go along this again. And if you happen to get that line... When you wipe your bottom, just pull this back up. And this will take about probably two, two and a half hours to dry because it is a glaze. And then I'm going to polyurethane this. And the cabinet is done. Okay, we're at the last step of if you're doing your kitchen cabinets or a buffet, which would be the same prep and everything for both. Our last step, if you would like to put a poly or protective coat on your cabinets. Um, I use Rust-Oleum Ultimate Polyurethane. It's a satin which is very close to a clear. I'm going to dip around here and you really need to wipe your brush off because this can leave some drip marks. And it looks milky but it's going to dry clear. And I just have my same Worcestershire brush from Home Depot. Um, this polyurethane I get at Lowe's. It's not sold at all stores, but I do know that Lowe's does carry it, and your hardware store might also carry it. But I'm just going to do one coat on this because I feel like this is going to give it um, a good enough protection that I will need. I'm going to lay that down, wipe my brush both ways because it, it will run and it will drip. So you just want to get a little bit on your brush. So this is my cabinet door. I just pull my strokes big and long like I've told you on all the other things that you do. And now for my drawer, it's like the same process. I'm going to turn it up on end. And I painted this with Farmhouse French Paints. And if you want to look at the colors for Farmhouse, you can go to farmhousepaint.com. And all of the colors are on there. This does not require you to put a poly on it. It doesn't require wax. I've just gone through all the steps in case you were to want that antique to look. And I use Farmhouse Paint Tea Glaze, which is wonderful and super simple to use. And I kept my same hardware because this wonderful paint paints right over it. So that's done. If you have any questions, please email me or go to my website at rusticstuffofthesouth.com or email me at rusticstuffofthesouth at gmail. Thank you, and I hope this helps y'all for all of those who want to learn how to do their cabinets on their own, and you don't have to hire it out. You can do it yourself. Thanks, and have a great day.